Hey, what's going on? It's your boy Joe Thunder back once again. And you're listening to the Smoking Joe Thunder podcast. And I'm already high as fuck. And I'm joined today with a very special guest. We are talking five in a row. If you don't know what that means, I don't know where the fuck you been. But these motherfucking Denver Broncos have turned shit around and won five in a row. And I got your boy Pincho Sack back again to speak on these Broncos. Let y'all know, you know, discuss some stuff, see what y'all think. What's going on, brother? Yo, yo, what's going down? Not too bad, man. It's been, it's like we said, we're won five in a row. Last time we talked, we kind of were kind of, things were kind of dismal, right? Yep, things actually are uh, the things complete weren't... opposite right now. Than what we were but are about. they? Like we talked about this earlier. So let's go kind of game by game. The last one was what? Was It was, it was... I'm trying so to think. We played the Browns, and then we played the Vikings before then. And but then. it goes, yeah. But we gotta, we gotta stop. We gotta start where we left off. So they had played. So they played the Jets the last time we talked. Yeah, they played the Jets and they lost to the Jets. And they losing to the Jets, which we had talked mad shit about in the media, how they, how <laughs> whack they were, and they're gonna be like us last year, and they beat us here. And then after that, who was it? It was Kansas City. It was Kansas City. Right. And, I mean, that one was like, eh, it was all right. But they still, we didn't do anything. Like, they beat us by, like, what, 10, 20 points? Yeah, I think it was uh, It was like 17 to 6 or maybe 23 to 6. And then after that was the day before my birthday. I remember that shit. And it was Green Bay. Yeah. And I remember went to my dad's crib. You know what I mean? Cause I had took a I had took like a week off from the Broncos. After the Jets game, I was disgusted. I was disgusted because we could have won that shit a couple times, oh, yeah. easily, easily. So I was like, "Fuck it, I'm going to the clean wagon. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> fuck the Broncos." I had to be like that for a second, and we got beat by Kansas City. Nothing new, you know what I'm saying? So then that following week. Like I said, it was my birthday. I believe my birthday was Monday. And I was like, I wanted to bake a cake for my birthday for me. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know, I'm kind of still like bachelor mode over here. I ain't got all the utensils. I got everything. My dad's place is a lot easier because he got everything that I need. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I said, fuck it, man. I'll just get some food, make some food for me and my dad. You know what I mean? I'll bake a cake for my birthday and watch the Bronco game. So, that's exactly what I did. And the Broncos win against the Packers, right? Yep, yep. That's when things started turning around. Right, right. Little by little, like, I still think those first couple games we got lucky. We should, Like I told you, we should have won by, we'll, we'll, we'll go down the line, but we should have definitely not won the way we won. But we beat the Packers by, like, just a couple points, right? So, me being a superstitious-ass motherfucker, I was like, damn, I baked a cake. And these motherfuckers won. So who did they play the next week? Then I think it was a bye, and then they ended up um then they ended up playing the Chiefs again. No, it was um wasn't it Buffalo first? Um uh, or was it the Chiefs? I think it was Buffalo first on that Monday, or was it the Chiefs? No, it was the Chiefs, you It right. was the Chiefs, yeah. So it went Packers and then the Chiefs. All right. So then we played the Chiefs. And finally, the defense shows out. And this is what I'm talking about right here with the Chiefs and then the Buffalo game. We barely won both those games. We did win them, but we barely won them. We barely won that Packers game. Yeah, that one we, too. We oh, yeah, that one too. But, but I'm saying when it came to the, 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 the Chiefs and Buffalo, like our defense had four turnover, you know, had four turnovers in both games. And we were in the red zone at least four or five times. And we couldn't score. Am I right? You're right. Like, we should have beat the Chiefs by, like, 40, 50 points on fucking national TV. And we should have been, we should have beat Buffalo, which was on national TV again, by 40, 50 motherfucking points. And we barely squeaked those out. So that's where I was still, like, you know, y'all tripping because. It's a few just miracle catches. You know, like, if those catches don't get made. Right, the games don't really get. But that's what I was telling you earlier. 
you can't really put all this blame on Russell Wilson because he has made two key. Like, you got to be a bad motherfucker to throw those touchdowns that he threw to Sutton on the Buffalo game. Oh, yeah. Where he had that, you know, the toe, not the toe tapper, but he had him in. He's one That's, of those. Yeah, you got to be a skilled motherfucker to throw it like that. Oh, yeah. And you got to have confidence. And he made that, he made that shit, and that's, they won, and kind of the same thing, you know, this week with a, what's the, what's the tight end's name? Uh, Troutman. Troutman. And that was a fucking spot on fucking throw, catch, fucking reception. I was. That was a thin line between love and hate, brother. You know, Sutton's showing out where he is kind of like a top, top wide receiver. You know what I mean? He could probably be top ten. He's making, he's proving. He can't himself. drop shit though, just like Judy can't drop. That's another right there. That's a perfect example. Judy dropped, and I love Jerry Judy, but Judy dropped a fucking touchdown in the Chiefs game. Was it the Chiefs game or the or the Buffalo? I think it was the the last game, right? The Buffalo. It was the Buffalo one where we could have really sealed it. You notice last year, Judy was like the main, the main target. But this year, he's kind of non-factor. You know what I mean? Like, I think they need to go to him more because, you know, he's a playmaker when he catches it. At least Mims got some action. You know what I mean? Go out there and make some plays, make some moves. So we've been creeping along, creeping along. You know, there's definitely a lot of luck involved. Oh yeah, this motherfucker. And you know, and then. We get to the Cleveland game. And once again, I feel like I feel we got a better start and we started off better because we were up by 14, right? You know what I mean? We were shutting them down. The defense was getting them. But it was like it seemed like they were coming back a little by little, but then we made we made some key plays. They were on that backup that's only played a second game. And, and that's the thing too. I mean, what do you think of that hit? Did you think that was a crazy hit, or do you think it was? It's a good hit. What is a good hit? Was did it, did it, did he hit, was he go, leading with the helmet? Was it? He might have been. It's a good hit either way because they're making a statement, right? So yeah. the Broncos are showing you that they're a hard defense. They've been knocking fools out all fucking year. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Cream Jackson's getting suspended multiple times. Yeah. For fucking laying motherfuckers out. And, I see that shit the first <laughs> play, fool. That fool got him, and I was like, "Oh shit, that was the exact same shit they're talking about." In football, yeah, you can't be soft. You know what I mean? So you got to know if you're gonna catch that ball, and you've seen untaped the week before. Those dudes are laying motherfuckers out. Then you're probably just gonna let that slide. You know what I mean? Uh huh. So I I like it. I think the D's coming through, and it's about time because, like I said last time we were here, we we're discussing. <laughs> yeah, what, we were talking about the D's getting, getting the same thing. We were talking about trade. Who's getting traded? <laughs> well, yeah, who's, we thought Judy Joseph was on needs the block. to go. And what do you think he did, or what do you think kind of happened right there, man? Like what made him turn shit around? Like I was listening, watching some shit, and they said just them mixing it up, like letting some people go, and letting some younger cats get shine. And you know what I mean? Those younger cats coming through. You know what I mean? What do you think? I think it's just he's calling different defensive plays. We got rid of a couple of guys, and uh, you just got to mix it up, like you said, because what he was doing before wasn't working. You know what I mean? So, and his job was on the line, and he knew, and that shit's embarrassing. No matter what, they got seventy on him. You he know? was almost in that Josh McDaniels zone, bro. Was, like this was the second, third time where he just, you might not ever be a coach again. And he turned it around somehow. He turned it around quick. I don't know what happened or how he did it, but, you know, things are looking better on the defensive side, I guess, on the offensive side, too. Um, it's still slacking, though, because if it wasn't for that defense, we definitely would have won those games. Oh, yeah. Because it, it's like, you know what I mean, it's, it's coming almost to, like, a numbers game where, like, we're, you know, we're, we're getting four, you know, turnovers, so, like, hopefully we make one of them. And that's exactly what's kind of happened because, like I said, if they'd have made three of the four or four of the four on each of the – not this game, the last two games, we'd have been smoking these fools. People would have really been talking like, oh, shit, what the fuck's up with the Broncos? Because they beat these fools by 30, 40 points in their crib. You know what I mean? And just, and that's the thing, too. I was looking at their schedule, and, like, we lost to fucking the Commanders by two points. We lost to the Raiders by one point. Right. And we, you know, so. Well, that's how we were last year. The record could be a lot different. It could actually be. You know, eight and fucking three. If that's just to give a matter of just small points. It looks like Russell and and Coach 
Peyton are finally on the same page, right? I think so. I think so, and I think that uh, if you look at Sutton and then you look at Michael Thomas, how he, Michael Thomas was with the Saints and Drew Brees, mm -hmm. same type of shit. Big receiver, making big-time plays, big-time catches. Um, I think that's why he's the number one read when uh, when the plays are called. I don't think... He I, needs to tighten up a little, <laughs> though, too, because he had that amazing catch, bro, but... He had two fumbles or like three fumbles, two fumbles in that game. Yeah, he's fumbling. And that's what I'm talking about with that one. If that fool wouldn't have fumbled like twice and you'd have made, you know, one touchdown, like, you know, we'd have, it wouldn't have been that fucking nail biter till the end, you know? You think that uh, at by the end of the year, when it's all said and done, you think Russell's going to stay or do you think they'll end up getting rid of him? It depends. If he continues to win and he continues, to improve, I could definitely see him staying. That's what I was thinking too. You know, before. he has to like really, and I even think even if he were to like lose, he has to really, really fuck up in order for them. I think to say no, we're not there. I think we're definitely picking him up. Yeah, because even you watch the news or ESPN, they're talking about his numbers are up there with the top. You know, you know what I mean? He's not like fucking up, fucking up. It's just I don't know. Like we talked about last time. We couldn't figure out if it was the play calling or if it's the receivers not fucking getting open. Well, now, I mean, he's definitely a couple, you know, the receivers are getting open. You know what I mean? I've seen even seen Judy with a couple of catches where, you know, I think they need to go to him more. But, I mean, I think that's getting solved. And I think the running game is helping as well. We were talking about one of the cats that's been shining is P. Ryan. Whew. P. Ryan's been lighting it up. Those you don't have him those last two games, bro. Like I said, he did. He if there was ten plays on that last. What was it? Was it the the Bills game? Say there was ten plays when they scored in the end. He was fucking part of eight or maybe even nine of them. The reason is because when it's when you're down like that, he's hungry and he's a big back. He's not like those other dudes are flashy, but they're not. Those guys get taken out one hit. These guys are like all style. They just run through motherfuckers. It takes a couple guys to get them down. You right. know what I mean? And you need a strong running back when it's time to make some shit happen. I could picture him staying. And I uh, think yeah, I think William's he's going. a definite key man for real. Like he's like, you know who he reminds me of? Of back in the day, Steve Sewell. Man, he's a cat like that. That third down, just specialist is gonna get it for you. Like a, yeah. like a, a Wes Walker, like, you know what I mean? Like a fucking, who's like another cat? I was like, who was the other cat? The, wa the white guy that was a Stokely. Stokely. For you know what I mean? He's a shit like that. It's, and that's what I meant with like, same with Sutton. Like, if you think about it, Russell Wilson's launching it up there, right? But Sutton's getting that shit. So, in a way, he's making Russell look good too. Oh, yeah. You know he's definitely I mean? doing his he's, part and making, you know, like, I think that last touchdown. He definitely, they said, even the announcers, like, he jumped it perfect and got above that foot. It was easy for him. He knew what he was doing. I think Sun's a he keeper. He lost him. Yeah. I think Sun's a keeper. I think they get rid of Judy. I think that uh, we win some more games. I think we beat Houston. I think we beat Detroit. Well, I don't know. Detroit might be hard. Yeah, I think Detroit might be a little, a little tougher. We still got to play the Chargers twice, so I think we'll get them once at least. Got to play the Raiders again, probably get them. How many games we got left? Uh, I think like six. So it looks like we got the Texans and then the Chargers, the Lions, the Patriots, the Chargers, and the Raiders. So I think we get the Texans. I think we get the Chargers one out of two. I think Texas might be a little tough. Patriots are on their way out. Yeah, after today they bench. Mac Jones. They fucking Mac Jones is out of there. Fucking uh Zappy. He's zapped. You know what I mean? Yeah, but how did him. fucking Herbert do? Herbert didn't do too good. Did they win or lose? They lost. That was tonight, right? Or was no, that, that last, was night? last night? They got to it. It's just one of those. It's gonna things, be man. interesting, man, because we definitely have the momentum going. That locker room is fucking, I'm sure, changed big time. It went from oh, yeah. one and six to fucking. 
frowns upside down. You know what I mean? Yeah, if it was wanted to fucking any given Sunday. You know what I mean? <laughs> so now it's definitely a better atmosphere, and they're starting to believe in Russell, and you know everything's starting to click. The running game—that's what I think it did. we need to concentrate on too—is just continue with the running game and that passing. Like you said, utilize that tight end, man. Yeah, the tight end, and Russell called some audibles at the line the last game. Where he seen like the defense spread out more, so he would run the ball up the middle. You know what I mean? And, I think he uh, needs to do that too. I think he needs to run it a little more. I know he's not as young as he was. Yeah, he was. He could have made that touchdown. He's a little faster on that pizza pizza play. And can we get a? Can can I get Coach Payton? Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Can you run a fucking bootleg? He would score every fucking time. Like Payton, if Peyton Manning can score on a bootleg. Russell Wilson's way motherfucking faster than Peyton Manning. Uh, he can real. score on a fucking bootleg when we're in the red zone. I was just telling someone that the other day. For dude, real, bro. Even game. I think one of the king bro, of that shit, Denver Bronco wise, was Jake Plummer, bro. He would sell that bootleg and score every time, dog. Oh yeah. And Russell Wilson's mobile. He's not fucking Peyton Manning all fucking, you know what I mean? All goofball ass, these motherfucker. Yeah, so man. Coach can Peyton. Do that shit. Think about running a bootleg when you're fucking in the red zone and. Probably be surprised. You know, that's a as good long idea. as he sells it. You know, no, that's a good idea. And you know what? Even if someone comes from that side, I always have that running back on that H back out. You know what I mean? Either way, it's a score. It's such a like a a guaranteed score every time. Because if we look up the statistics of how many times we've been in the red zone and how many times we did in a score, you're gonna be like, "Fucking hey, we got issues." We're doing all right, though. At least we're scoring touchdowns. Well, they, when we need them. Yeah, and coming through. Could be a lot better. Um, because guaranteed further down the road, say we make the playoffs. Right. We're going to have to run into them Dolphins sooner or later. Ooh. You know what I mean? Like, Would that be crazy to play like the Dolphins in the first or second round? I mean, probably, it'd probably be the second round because they would win it. They'll probably win the and they, Yeah, they would, and we would have to do the wild card and then play them. Yeah. But can you imagine that? I, it's possible. I and mean, then that would just, you know. Because the Dolphins are too good. They, they they got a different style of play, Colin. They got a different. I think if that defense could get on Tua, though, you know. They put Sertan on Tyree Kill, I think, that we might have a chance. You know. No, you're going to have to double Tyree. But they got, Jay, like, Waddle. He's fast too, so I was, I read something on the Dolphin that they got like the top five fastest players in the league. They're two running backs, the two wide receivers, and uh, some dude on their defense. So they're just all about speed. They're just all about being fast. About getting it, huh? Yeah. And it's warm. Mm-hmm. That's the deal with this cold. It's been fucking cold lately. And taxes. You don't got to pay taxes. That's even more incentive. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Shit, I'd be fucking... All football players should be having residency over in fucking Florida. Dude, I never knew, but you know, like, what's crazy is I never knew this until, I don't know, I guess I'm known for, like, a while, but I didn't know at first. Like, athletes and musicians, they have to pay tax in every fucking city. So if you're a basketball player and you're playing in fucking 30, 40 cities, you got to pay income tax in every fucking city and state. You know what I mean? Like, if you oh, play yeah. in fucking... Texas, you got to pay Texas tax. It's that check, because the check that from when you play, yep, you're right. Even a musician, if you on a fucking 50 fucking city tour, you're paying taxes in every fucking state. Can you imagine doing those taxes? That's crazy. Right? So you're fucking having to file in every fucking state. Imagine remembering all that. You got to have a manager that's really on top, or like a... That you can trust. Yeah, or a fucking accountant. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? You got to have someone really fucking in the mix. For real, for real. You got to have like a couple of lawyers and accountants and fucking someone to watch the accountant and someone to go over it. Yeah. So, yeah, that shit gets crazy. How much do you think that is? That's like probably at least 30% of what you're making, if not more. Yeah, I would say a manager fee would probably be like 15%. And then like. Do you think that much? I thought I thought like a manager fee would be like 3%. I would think 15's like. 15's a lot, bro. Like, fuck that. You better be doing some shit. Yeah, like, I would say about 15 I know, like, uh, certain labels. What do you like, think your average? What do you think your average sports agent 
charges? 15%? I would say 10 to 15%. I don't know. That's a good question. But it's not, especially on the music side. You know what I mean? Like, you got a road road agent, manager. You got, you got a million motherfuckers. You got a lot of things going on. You got road crews. You got fucking hired drivers. You know, you got... You got to have someone really on top of, of, of that shit like that. As far as the sports things go, I think so. I think maybe, it, I don't know. I don't know what it would be. You know what I mean? Right, That's a right. good question. So we got the Texans next week, bro. We got the Texans and we right. got CJ Stroud. And um, We got to stop him. We got to shake him up. Rattle him up. I think we're going to do good. You know, because if you watched the, the, the Jacksonville game last week against uh-huh. the Texans, the Texans got exposed a lot. You know what I mean? They just put the heat on them. Jacksonville guys are just running up, sack them, sack them, sack them. Yep, yep. And I don't know if I told you last time, bro, but for these five games that the Broncos have won, I have baked a cake every day during the game, and they have won, so I haven't stopped. My dad even started tripping on me because I was using <laughs> all the eggs, bro. What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing, Dad? We got to win today. You know what I mean? I even thought, like, I thought they might break it this this week. Because, like I said, I didn't get to watch the whole game. I was running around. And I don't know what the fuck, dog. But for some odd reason, I thought the game was at three. And no, that shit was at the regular time. Yeah, too. You know what I mean? So when I'm, like, you know, getting ready to kind of, like, I'm already running a little late. You know what I mean? Like, it's already three. And I go to Google, and it's already, like, 14 to zero. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I'm like, I'm at the antique spot over on Jewel Havana. Go check them out. Herlums. They got all the dope shit. And I was like, well, I got to stop at the store and get the cake mix and get to the crib. You know what I mean? So I Google, and it already started. And I was like, oh, shit, it's 14-0. So I go real quick because I'm right by King Supers. Get my shit. Go my dad's. You know what I mean? It's already, I kind of start watching the game. You know what I mean? And. I want to say it was like six. They had already scored like six points at that moment. And they were kind of coming back. And I was like, oh, shit, man. What the fuck's going on? Y'all are doing so good. It's like they break out pretty good. They were boost, Those announcers were boosting up that Browns defense. They said it's the number one right. defense and this and that. But I don't know. I didn't see it. Newsom got burned multiple times. And if not, he's pass interference. <coughs> and... uh you know, none of those dudes got no sacks, really. Right, for real. So, I, th- I think it was an all right. But, you know what? We'll see what happens with the Texans. I don't see how the Texans... I mean, they're doing good, but... That's we just got to do it's better. It's a different team now. It's a road team, too. So, like, we're on the road, and then we're on the road to Detroit. We have, like, three road games in a row. The next the next home game we have is the game before Christmas. On Christmas Eve, it's the Patriots. Okay, okay. So, that's a big stretch. So, like, I was thinking I might not have to bake a cake. These motherfuckers are just going to win outright. They're going to you're gonna show me the Super Sisters. But then I started seeing they was coming back, and I was like, oh, fuck, I got to bake it. So I baked it, and they won. So you definitely yeah. bake one this Sunday. For sure. You know what I mean? I got to get the time right. Do they play early? Do they play at 11? No, they moved it to 3 o'clock, right? They were going to play at, like, 11. And Did then they the move NFL it? moved it to, like, 2 o'clock to get more views. I'm almost positive. All right, that'll be cool. Throw some fucking dye in that. Make it a orange or blue cake. Do you make that Bronco cake? Do a um, fucking, yeah, just with some soda or some shit. Yeah. I have to do it up, bro. But I've been all fat lately. Eat cakes, bro. <laughs> like, shit. You know what I mean? But shit. What else is going on with you, man? Ain't not much, man. i just been chilling. Just been hanging out and shit. Hell, yeah. I see you all decked out again. What, what's one thing you think the Broncos need to do? To like keep it going, or keep you know Just keep the momentum. I think momentum is a good part of it, but you know what? I would like to see them complete more passes. These little fucking four yard rinka dinks. And like I said, dude, like if it wasn't Sutton for Sutton, those a lot of those catches aren't getting made, and then we lose by those points and we lose those <coughs> games. So I would like to see a little more throwing. But you know what? I seen the other day. There's like four quarterbacks 
that are the fastest to get like a certain amount of yards, right? Right. In rushing. And one was like Michael Vick. One was Lamar Jackson. And I forget who the third one was, but the fourth one was Russell Wilson. He so, can do it, bro. Yeah, I didn't realize that. That yeah. he was one of them guys. You know what I mean? He is. Running around and shit, so. I think we need to strike right away. Like, air it out right away. Like, I know we got the the running, but on those first downs, let's, like, go for it all. Let's, let's go for a bomb, like you said, to either Sutton or fucking Judy, like, up the sideline type shit. You know what I mean? Just fucking launch Kind of try to catch him off guard and yeah. and let Russell – tell have Russell run it a little more. And I said bootleg. Yeah, we call it right with the plays and get the tight end involved. Exactly. Yeah. That Those are the key things right there is the tight end – you know what I mean? I think kind of like going for it on like that first down, like the first play. Like, remember when the Broncos would do that with Elway, even in the Super Bowl? We got smoked by Washington. But, motherfucker, that first play, when he threw that bomb to Mark Jackson for, or Ricky Natillo and scored that touchdown, that was the shit. Remember when they did that fucking. Uh, when Elway caught the fucking catch? He was like, yep, yeah, I know what you're you know talking what I mean? about. He lined up on the fucking... Uh, he like, no, he quarterbacked and like handed off, and then that fool went that way, and he ran the and other he way. he ran and launched it, yeah. All slow-ass motherfucker, but he <laughs> caught it, shit. <laughs> it's one of those things, you know what I mean? But when it's all said and done, I think the Bronco fans will be all right. You know what I mean? I went to the Chiefs game uh, when they were here, and that shit was funny, dude. When they beat the Chiefs, they started playing that Taylor, some Taylor Swift song. That's hilarious. Talking shit, you know what I mean? They just kind of uh, on a repeat. Hell yeah, But man. it's one of those things, but it'll be all good. I think we're in good shape, at least, like, you know, we we can stumble. I, I can see us losing three more, um, but I think we got the Patriots. I know we got the Chargers once. I know we got the Raiders, and it's just about... Um, you need to keep building, you know what I mean? Like they said, well, they jumped out this time, so next time let's just, we need to jump out by, like, Three, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, just keep going. And I hear they're playing in domes too, so they have to worry about no weather. You know, yeah, what I mean? no, no excuses. You're right. Yeah, the Texans and the Lions. So those would be two harder games, I guess. I think, the, yeah, but, the Lions definitely. Yeah, the Lions are doing good. I heard that uh, Goff is like the, one of the number one or two quarterbacks in the league in completions. Yeah, he's, he's really good. He's had a he's resurrection. Like that's good, yeah. He turned Detroit around. With Stafford, they were sucking. You know what I mean? Right. But then he had Stafford goes and then wins with... Wins with the Rams. With the Rams, you know. The, that was another big thing, too, man, is Von Miller did not have a sack against the Denver Broncos. Mm. You is know, Von Miller the same? Or? I don't think he's the same. You know, you get that surgery, you're a little older. You only have a few. I mean, I picture him retiring in like two years. If not fucking at the end of the season. You know what I mean? Like, he's kind of. He signed a crazy contract, too, man. Yeah, it's. Crazy. I never thought he would get another contract like that. He took the money and he's going to run with it. You know what I mean? Because after that injury, you're just not the same. There's guys out there. I mean, they're stronger. They're tougher. If you're Kobe, year. you'll make it. Yeah. If you're Shaq, you won't. No, no offense to Shaq. I love him. The thing with Kobe, you know, they made him. They made sure they never got rid of him. Well, he's just a crazy grinder, bro, no matter what. like you Yeah, know. Kobe was cool. So, Jordan, Kobe, or LeBron? Who do you think's number one? In oh, definitely opinion? Jordan. I think so, too. I'll go, I'll go Jordan, Kobe, LeBron. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. I even watched something too where they said somebody else and fuck I cannot remember who it was but it was someone it was someone like crazy like like when you think about it you're like I think it goes in eras well, you know what I mean like yeah true that we got, we got the Jordan era and then there was the Kobe era and then the LeBron era who was before who was before Jordan though um I would say Kareem I would say Dr. J yeah, Kareem, Dr. J I would say you know Larry Bird. Bernard King. Bernard King. Larry Bird. Magic Johnson. There's a lot of those guys. James Worthy. Has there ever been a rivalry like Lakers 
Celtics, Bird Magic. I don't. You, you, you know what I mean? The Pistons and the Bulls. Okay. That was a good rivalry. They had that going for a while. And even the Bulls and the Pacers, when Reggie Miller was playing, those games got pretty thick. That was when back in the days. Those are like my, that's my favorite era. Era. Yeah. Yeah, mine too. Who were, who were like some of your favorite players? Um, I don't know. I used to like Larry Johnson, Chris Webber. I used to like Penny Hardaway, Clyde Drexler, Dominique Wilkins. I used to like uh, Sean Kemp. You know what I mean? Gary Payton. Harold Miner, a couple of those guys from back. Isaiah Ryder, Isaiah Ryder, yeah. Spree, Spree, well. My original was oh, I'm a little older than you, so like you said, in eras, I'm going with Xavier McDaniel's, Dominique Wilkins, Spud Webb, Jordan, Barkley Malone, Stockton. Then after that, you got your Tim Hardaway. You got your Glenn Rice. Yeah, Glenn Rice was good. Who else? I'm going to say like um, like Eddie Johnson. There was a gap, I would say, from the mid-90s to the mid-2000s. Oh, I missed the one we were totally talking about earlier. The Dikembe Larry Johnson, Stacy Ogman. Oh, yeah, Stacy Ogman. Who else was in that shit? Dennis Scott, Dennis. Gary Payton, Lionel Simmons. Yeah. That was 89. Derek Coleman was number one. Oh, yeah, Derek Coleman on the Nets. That's when I kind of really started getting into it. Like, I was into it when I was younger, but that's when I kind of feel... I, I came around in 89. That's a long time ago. Because even look at football. You know what I mean? Just think you that. You got Aikman, Deion Sanders, Andre Coach Prime, Andre. Barry Sanders. You know, who else? Um, Thurman Thomas, Sammy Smith. Yep, Sammy Smith. Tim Worley, Eric Metcalf. Eric Metcalf, yeah. Steve Atwater, Atwater. Bobby Humphrey. What yeah, Bobby talking Humphrey about? was in that. Nah, yeah, that was a good year. And then same with baseball. It was like Griffey and fucking... Exactly. Griffey and... Griffey. <laughs> <laughs> Griffey was the only good one in 89, right? I mean, there are a couple, but they fizzled. Yeah. You I ever... can name them Jerome Walton, Dwight Smith, Ricky Jordan. Dave Justice might have been a year up and Sammy Sosa. I think those guys were in like 90. They were like a couple years later. Or they were like 90. 1991, yeah. Smoltz and And then McGuire was the year before 89, 88. Yeah. He had the Olympic card, remember? Yeah. That McGuire tops with the wood that looks like... Uh, that's Barry Bonds' with, rookie year. With that background, yeah, yeah. with the Barry Bonds. I think Bo Jackson, like, too. And Bo's, yeah. 87. That's when I was kind of collecting cards when I kind of started. You know what I mean? I remember the Bo Jackson score with the bat, the fucking infamous poster. Yeah, that Bo Jack. Oh, with the uh, pads and the, the Nike, mat. just do it. Yeah. yeah, that was a card reader. That and the Griffey. Yeah. Oh yeah, those are the ones to get. But you know what? Like, it's hard to explain to people nowadays. Like I was telling this to to my homie the other day. Like, let's say I put out an album in two thousand four. There's kids right now that are like seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That fucking. You know what I mean? That wasn't even out by the time they're 15 listening to music. Mm-hmm. That shit's already 15 years old. They don't know nothing about that shit. You know what I, I mean? remember, like... It's like the cards, you know what I mean? Like Or, like, even the, sports. Like, yeah, they don't know. Like, I remember, like, 10 years ago, I was at some job. We were just talking to these young, you know, people that worked there or whatever, and we were throwing out shit. They had no idea what the fuck we were talking about. And that was 10 years ago. I remember one of them was like Deion Sanders or like, or Bo Jackson. They're like, we have no idea. They didn't know what the Humpty Dance was. Like, fuck you. You know what I mean? <laughs> they didn't know what OPP was. Like, I was like, fuck, dog. Like, and this was a while ago. So now you can even imagine even more. They have no I idea. Have they don't no give clue. a fuck. Yeah, about Steve Outwater yeah. fucking laying out Chris Nicoya. They'd be like, who are those guys? <laughs> imagine someone, yeah. <coughs> imagine someone telling you. To fuck when you're 15 years old to like something 15 years before some player or something you know what I mean it just went register did you ever see like the little video viral of the kid at the football camp with Bo Jackson and he's a running back the kid 
and Bo Jackson's right next to him, and he has no idea who Bo Jackson uh, is. Uh, and that's Bo Jackson, bro. Like, so yeah, I think so. like like my know. favorite basketball player is Jason Williams, white chocolate. But if you tell someone that now, like I play basketball at the church, there's like some who? youngsters there. Do you remember Jason Williams on the Kings? Oh yeah, for sure. He was dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's definitely one of my favorite players. Yeah, he's definitely up there. He's top. He's definitely top ten, maybe top five. He, he's legit. He's cool. I I used to like his passes and shit. And then I play basketball at this church. There's some youngsters there that don't even know who that even is. Yeah, you know what I mean? No clue. I had that jersey on when I walked in. They have no idea who the professor is, bro. The professor, those and one tapes. You know, they that. have no idea about that <laughs> shit, bro. They be like the professor. Who the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's a, it's kind of like a lost like lost art, bro. Like. It's all just fucking eras. It's, yeah, eras, and no one wants to, like, reminisce. And I'm, I maybe we were the same way. You know, I don't think I was. I listened to my parents' music. But it's like... I like watching the old shit, even to this day, bro. My daughter didn't even know what a cassette was. I was like, what do you know what this is? And she didn't know. I had to explain to her. But it's kind of like eight tracks and shit when we were kids. We just, I didn't understand that shit because I grew up with the cassettes. Shit, you know my, my parents, my dad had the adapter that you threw in the cassette player that played the A track. Or no, the A track that, <laughs> okay, blah, blah, blah. it was an A track player in the car. And he had this shit, he stuck in it. And then you put your tape right on it, it would play, play the, the tape. tape through the A track. Oh, that's pretty dope. For real. You know what I used to do with cassettes? I used to, uh, so all the cassettes had two holes on each. They had one hole on the end, on Mm -hmm. the tops. But if you put um, tape over it, then you can record over that cassette and make your own cassette. Yeah, on the top, yeah. The ones that were whack-ass cassettes. Yeah, you just put plug in, put a little toilet, not even toilet paper, a little fucking notebook paper crumble in there. Yeah, right, in that little crease. Yep, and you fucking record over that shit. That was old school. They have no idea about this shit. They don't know about the hardships that we yeah, went through, we went bro. Through some shit. Can you imagine no internet, no cell phone, y'all youngsters? For real. Getting them fucking pages. TV was like five channels. Yeah, and it was fucking... Like, to get music, you had to go get music. I remember being young as fuck going to 16th Street Mall, and I still can't remember the name of this place. But if you know where Walgreens is at, right on 16th Street Mall, it was two stores down. And if you go diagonal to the other end of the block of where Walgreens was, it was Woolworth. I remember Woolworth. They used to sell fucking bomb ass fucking food. food and shit. And like. they used to have the write on magazines, the rap magazines, and GI Joes back in the day. Day. Yeah, I remember Woolworth. I forgot about Woolworth. I remember I went to go see Run DMC in 1989, and I don't remember if my mom dropped me off or I caught the bus. I don't remember. But before I went there, I stopped at Woolworth and grabbed on some pizza or some shit. And then walk two blocks down. They ain't there. Definitely not there. But it's called, it used to be called the Kala, the auditorium. It's right across from the convention center. And I seen Run DMC and Bobby Brown there. Oh, and I, prior to that, I had seen wrestling there when I was really, 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 really young. And I remember, dog, it was the Iron Sheik versus Tito motherfucking Santana, <laughs> bro. I'm talking old school wrestling. Oh, with that's the, dope. The, oh, the what's the the claw, the fucking that's the best the best area right there, bro. That was shit was life changing. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever go to old record stores like Spins Records or uh, I went today and bought all those records. tapes or um oh yeah I one. went to Wax Tracker and a couple of places. Yeah, today I bought like fifteen tapes in a fucking like Alcoholics album. Yeah. Yeah, I've been on it, bro. Like. I wanted to go to a couple other, but I spent so much money at the first one, they wiped me out. Well, shit, man. Oh, well, yeah. I guess we'll fucking, uh, we'll see how we're doing here in a few weeks. And fucking, like, we got a couple up. days. Today's, I don't even know what today is. Today's Monday. Monday. And they play Monday. on Sunday. <clears throat> yeah. You'll probably hear from us maybe on next Monday. <laughs> That's right. We'll give it, a, we'll see what happens this next game. When the Broncos win. I'm going to say they're going to win by touchdown. No, they're going to win by at least 10 points. As long as the fucking... 
Cake's been baked, I think. We'll, yeah. We'll be all right. Bake cake. You know what I'm saying? And continue this win streak. Yeah, let's get it. All right. We out of here. Peace Go Broncos. Out. Peace.